Hello and welcome. This is Rufamonger, my friends. Let's talk about some fighting game characters. Fighting game characters, they're a very silly bunch. We have peoples whose martial art is just slathering themselves with oil. Kung Fu masters whose Kung Fu is the way of the sleepy fist. And they sleepwalk their way through combat to sometimes literally Rambo. And today we will be talking about Jacko from the Guilty Gear franchise. So Jacko made her debut in Guilty Gear Exard Revelator and very recently has come out for Guilty Gear Strive. Jacko on top of also coming out in Guilty Gear Strive sort of took the world by storm with the Jacko challenge due to her, let's say, unique crouching animation. So before we get into her lore properly and talk about some of her classical gameplay throughout the years, let's talk just a little bit about Jacko herself. So Jacko in a series that has lots of weird monsters, demon people, self-serious all around really, she's super bubbly, super personable, and just kind of happy to be wherever she is. Also you could argue with a bit of a split personality because depending on what's going on, she can talk with a normal mature adult voice or sound just like a kid. And while it's not quite a split personality, it most certainly has to do with her origins. And Jacko has a bit of a Halloween theme, I guess you could say. Uh, her name, Jacko, Jacko Lanterns, all the kind of stuff, you see that on her mask. And she's also obsessed with candy. At the start of the character's development, that's a, a very much a necessity because uh, her mask is what lets her basically stay around. She needs it to just survive day to day, and if she's not wearing it, then she basically needs a lot of candy to keep going. Why does that make sense? Well, don't worry about it too much because they didn't either. It also happens to be a problem that sort of solves itself over the course of the series. Despite these odd mannerisms and sometimes childish attitudes though, she can be pretty pragmatic and mature at times either sort of scolding her opponents or just trying to expand their knowledge. Although sometimes that childish side does sort of break through. So that all said, let's talk about her gameplay throughout the games because it has changed a bit from game to game. So Jacko gameplay wise, I remember years ago when Jacko was first explained to me, I was told she was the League of Legends character and obviously that's a little confusing for a fighting game character, right? But Jacko in Revelator, that kind of fits. She has three minion spawners, and they kind of spawn in three lanes, top, mid, and bottom, right? So in that essence, she kind of is the League of Legends character, right? Because that's how minions work in League of Legends. So these little guys, minions, goobers, little buddies, whatever you want to call them, they just constantly spawn out of the minion summoners. And the minion summoners level up over time. And the minions get better weapons, do more damage, all the kind of stuff. They just spawn out. Uh, any hit will despawn them. You can also break the spawners. And you can toss the spawners around. So that's certainly a pretty different way at coming at a fighting game, right? Also, this is her main form of engagement with the enemy. Almost everything she does revolves around these minions. Come Guilty Gear Strive, Jacko returns, but... A little bit different so the minions are still a very core part of the game plan but there is no more minion spawner Jacko herself just puts the minions out on the field and she can use and abuse them however she wants toss them around kick them around bounce them off each other there's all sorts of fun stuff in that regards but no minion spawners due to the different nature of the game uh, the minion spawner concept wouldn't work quite the same or quite as well but regardless of which game you're playing the minions are the core part of the game plan and the reason you're picking the character. Funnily enough, they have exactly zero to do with her lore. They have nothing to do with her plot. They're just kind of there. But still, no matter what version of Jacko you're playing, it's all about minions. So now let's talk directly about Jacko, her lore, and her backstory. The thing is, before Jacko, we kind of have to talk about someone else entirely. We have to talk about Arya Hale. So Arya Hale is a brilliant scientist from the timeline before everything kind of fell to crap in the Guilty Gear world. She fell in love with another brilliant scientist named Frederick. You know him better as Soul Bad Guy. 
Teaming up with another scientist called Aska R. Kreutz, they began work on the GEAR project. Now, this isn't the video to go fully in depth on the GEAR project, right? That it would be an hour plus video probably. Uh, but suffice to say, it's very important to the lore of Guilty Gear, right? So during this time working on the Gear project, the issue is Arya Hale gets sick. What she had, there was no cure, but Asuka R. Kreutz was hoping there'd be a cure in the future. Asuka and Fred pleaded with her, please, you know, let us put you in cryo sleep or something, stasis, till there is a point where there is a cure for what you have. And she said no deal. She just wanted to spend her remaining time with Fred. And the only way that she would agree to this is if somehow Fred could live on into the future as well. And very long story short, that's exactly what happens. Asuka R. Kreutz turns Frederick Bulsara into Soul Bad Guy, the Guilty Gear, the first ever gear. Arya would be put into cryo sleep and then get turned into Justice, a.k.a. Godzilla, pretty much. Uh, it, is, it gets really complicated. There's a lot of layers. We haven't even talked about Jacko yet, right? We're getting to her. So very long story short, all of this sets the entire franchise in motion. This is the beginning, for the most part, of uh, all the events that are to come. Soul Bad Guy, now part gear, the titular Guilty Gear himself, goes on to have many adventures. Arya, part of her soul is in Justice. Justice is killed by Soul Bad Guy eventually at some point, and then defeated again and again and again, because that's just how the plot goes. Uh, so we have this here, and both Arya's form as Justice and Soul Bad Guy's new gear form persist on into the future. And Asuka R. Kreutz, that man, has persisted on into the future as well. And finally, uh, it takes a lot of games, but all the plot lines converge. And in reality, even though he probably did all the worst ways to do it, the whole thing Asuka was trying to do was just make sure Arya and Frederick survived on into the future so they could finally be reunited. Thus, enter Jacko. So Jacko is an artificial life form, not quite a robot, but still an artificial life form. She is also a Valentine. So the Valentines are all genetic copies of Arya Hale, and they were created by the Universal Will, which is a whole other thing we don't need to get into. The one difference is Jacko is the only Valentine not created by the Universal Will, as she was created by that man, Aska R. Kreutz. It's not fully gone into, but when Arya was turned into Justice, the Godzilla slash robot monster, not all of her soul was used up. There's a portion of her soul left behind, one way or the other, right? And that portion of her soul and part of her memories are baked into Jacko. So Jacko, despite being an artificial life form, is part Arya, has part of her soul, and also has pretty much all of her memories. Including the memories that loved Frederick. Ooh, that'll be a part later on we'll talk about. So she is basically nothing short, nothing less of a vessel. They are basically taking Jacko, trying to recover Justice, the uh, being that Arya became, right? And they're trying to get the rest of her soul back from Justice and put it in the Jacko. And the idea is, once you get all that done, then Jacko becomes Arya. And at which point, Arya can finally be reunited with Soul Bad Guy. Things maybe don't go one to one the way they hoped for in this regard. But first, now that we know who Jacko is, now that we know her purpose, we have to go collect justice. And when you know it, that's pretty much where the plot goes, right? So they go to justice, fight the universal will, which is a whole other thing. Uh, so Arya turned to this giant Godzilla monster and they're there to basically make things right. Since Jacko is also part Arya, just the same as Justice is, she can basically kind of overwrite Justice and fuse with Justice and get back Arya as a whole. Naturally, for the sake of the plot, there's some drama that goes on. Everything doesn't quite go as planned. Some stuff needs to happen. Some lasers need to be shot before the final victory can be achieved. 
That said, all the plot lasers that need to be shot get shot. Soul powers up into his proper gear form to deal with it. Uh, and basically saves the day. And Jacko gets to complete her mission, form and fuse with justice. So now both halves of Arya are now whole. And well, happily ever after, right? Uh, you can see Jacko kind of transforms uh, and loses her white hair on the outside and gains the red hair of Arya Hale. So the physical appearance is changing because now both halves of Arya are whole and thus you would think a new being is formed. Ending the events of Guilty Gear Exard and going into Guilty Gear Strive. As you can see, Jacko has a little bit of a new look. So the hair is reversed. It's red on the outside, white on the inside versus it used to be white on the outside, red in the inside and has green eyes now as well. The thing is the plan worked. Arya's soul is now fully in Jacko, but the issue is Jacko is still the dominant personality. Jacko mentally is still the one steering the wheel. So everything worked, but Jacko is still Jacko and Arya's soul is in there fully with all of Arya's memories, uh, which he had partially before, but now everything's fully complete, right? But Arya does not want to come out as the dominant personality. So basically, as things stand, Jacko's kind of waiting for Arya to take over her mind because she's an artificial creation and she's totally cool with it. I'm effectively, even if it's not mechanically, a robot. I serve my purpose, so I'm just waiting to lose my free will and have your dead girlfriend come back to life and take over my mind. And while we're waiting for that to happen, uh, we'll just go on cool bounty hunting adventures together and wait for the plot, as it were, to happen. The thing is, as things tend to go, Jacko, as an artificial life form, originally, you know, no personality, no emotions, but she's been around for a while, done some stuff now, and even if she may deny it, she's starting to get, you know, free will, emotions, all that kind of stuff. And the problem is, since she already had a giant chunk of Arya's memories to begin with, that sort of imprinted on her from the start, a bit of a like for Soul Bad Guy. And as she starts developing her own personality and her own thoughts and feelings, uh, it's not just the imprint of the memory. It's kind of she has feelings for him as well. We also have the proper full on plot of Guilty Gear Strive where Eno is the big bad. And uh, it's actually totally 100% Jacko's fault. This is even an issue. As Eno, despite being a rock and roll guitar witch, is actually the cosmic force of all of humanity's like wills and wishes for all good things for all human beings, except she's a total prick, right? So uh, she might have all this uh, manifestation in her, but her uh, personality doesn't quite match. And she didn't know a single thing about this till Jacko spilled the beans in Guilty Gear Exarg Revelator. Thankfully, hey, don't worry, we got our MacGuffins lined up. So Jacko actually has the ability to completely stop Eno whenever she wants at the cost of her own life. No matter how strong Eno may become, she's basically just a total counterbalance and she can deal with her whenevs, just I won't exist anymore. But hey, no big deal. I'm just an emotionless robot, right? My whole purpose was just to wait for Arya's soul to take over, except wait, you know, she's not really coming out. And throughout the game, Arya's soul is kind of poking at Jacko. Hey, I'm here, I'm inside, but maybe I don't want to come out because maybe you deserve to live. And maybe since I'm you and you're me, sort of, I totally know your feelings for soul and maybe you should act on them. Now, while all this introspective stuff is going on, Jacko's not at the forefront of the main action of the game. Uh, the main plot of Guilty Gear Strive uh, is basically White House down. Lots of terrorists, lots of guns, lots of President of the United States, and hey, the White House. She will work her way to the White House, though, by the end of the story. So as we come to the end of the main plot of Guilty Gear Strive, we're all at the White House, which is also a flying fortress by this point, just so you know. And uh, Eno basically won. There's no actual stopping her at this point. So Jacko's like, well, time to do the thing I'm going to do and I'm gonna sacrifice myself to stop you. And enters her body in a weird time-space dimension. That's not really explained too well. I have no idea what's going on, honestly. Uh, but it works, right? 
hey, I'm in here in this weird space time deal, and Eno stopped. We're all good. You know, being alive was cool. I dug it. But this is the right thing to do. Saving the world's uh, not a bad gig, right? Maybe, you know, I didn't fulfill my end goal. Maybe Arya didn't come out. Maybe I didn't fully self-actualize my own internal feelings. But we're saving the world, so all's well that ends well. Except this is the point where we reach into the plot where Soul Bad Guy literally like punches into Eno's guts into the weird space dimension that Jacko's in and is like, no, we're gonna do this together. Maybe I like you even if you're not fully my dead girlfriend, which we spent like a hundred plus years trying to bring back, right? I like you for who you are. What about saving the world? Eh, we'll find another way. And if we can't, at least we're together, power of friendship, all that fun stuff. So basically we have our big love conquers all kind of deal, right? And that's all well and good, uh, but we still have to beat Eno. But you know what? Don't worry about that because we got another MacGuffin to end all MacGuffins. Uh, we'll get to it in a minute here. But that is basically it. So... Uh, maybe the grand experiment was a failure, right? Arya never really kind of came back the way this whole plan that took hundreds of years to set into motion set out to do. But Sol sort of, at least physically, got his dead girlfriend back. So that's good enough for the soul of Arya, who's happy about it enough for Jacko to kind of be her own person. And, uh... All the suffering and untold millions dead that Asuka Arkroitz did to set this exact moment in time to happen, I guess for him it's worth it. Because literally the entire planet got screwed up for Sol to get together again with his dead girlfriend. Like tens of millions of people had to die for this to happen. Anyways, all that and now power of love, all that kind of stuff. So Eno still has to be dealt with. So why not just a giant gun that shoots a big old laser that puts out literally infinite power the laser shoots you know pretty good she's dealt with end of that and that comes the end of guilty gear strive and basically we get the happy ending soul bad guy is now a regular human being again he lost all of his gear powers that was taken away from him jacko finally has the area soul inside of her uh maybe it doesn't really do too much as she's still her own person but no matter how you sling it, Jacko got the happy ending. She's with the guy he likes. Nice little home, nice idyllic little lake to look at. Uh, there's the giant uh, spaceship. Don't worry about that. That's a different thing. They sent Asuka to the moon because that's what he wanted. But my friends, that is the ridiculous history of Jacko from Guilty Gear. Is this the end of our tale? Who knows? There'll be more Guilty Gears in the future. As of the time of making this video, there's actually a story expansion planned. But for now, that's where we're at. And that's also where we're at for this video. We are now at the end. So my friends, all I gotta say is thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. Go out and play some Guilty Gear.